Somebody puts a spell on me that will remain there, I promise you. I will not allow them to do that. Quervis and Rietta arrive in time for Antoinette's hearing, but there's no sign of her. They worry that she might not show up. I can. When she does eventually arrive, they decide to try to arrest her as she's leaving the courthouse. Despite Rietta's tough talking the night before, her senior male colleagues exclude her from the actual arrest as they plan to take a more low-key approach. Making no secret of her interest in the occult, Antoinette is clutching a book about astral travel. Sorry, Antoinette. Have you seen the book in the book? Yes, I have. I have been talking with you and I have been talking with you. Can you come with us and come with us and come with us? Yes. A few questions for you. Yes. 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 Maar als je je kaart schoont, dan rijden, is het niet een probleem. Wacht maar, mag je niet? Oké. Antoinette is interrogated for seven hours. But she denies any involvement in the murder and says that her husband, Martin, is innocent as well. She makes one special request, that she be allowed to keep her book on astral travel because, she says, it's her new Bible. Later that night, she's transferred to the cells. After less than an hour, she changes her alibi. The next day, she's formally charged with the murder of Rena Radloff. <laughs> Bars, Quervis and Rietta turn their attention to Martin Radloff, still a suspect in the murder. He's bought a disused power station in Soweto and moved in there with his children. Quervis and Rietta now want to question the children about the case. Martin, who insists on his innocence, has already missed one appointment to bring them in. Martin? Yes. Hoe gaan het? Bedankt in die praat. Quervis, Jonke. Hallo, Quervis, Jonke. Gaat het goed? Nee, right, Jong. Luister, wanneer gaan jullie kinders bring? Donderdag. Dit zal mij perfect passen. Ik is donderdag ook. Zo laat. Oké. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, bye. bye. So, Sorry. Sorry, um, um, did you book those dates for me? Uh, oh, glory. The, yeah, there's it, the approval. The, um, 11th of May. It's mm. this week and Thursday. Ooh, then you're going to have a problem. Because and just before you go further now, so uh, have you got the schools on this Thursday? Yeah. Well, I've, I've made an appointment with, with uh, Martin Radloff. He, he, he came now this morning when I phoned him and he said that he's arranged with us for Thursday. Now, I don't know whether he's arranged with you, but he definitely did not arrange with me. Thursday <laughs> to do what? To, to bring his children through for no, the no, 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 no. You can't tell us when he's bringing the children through. Yeah. We don't make appointments with witnesses. Yes, but we I take the statements and that's it. But the, in, in any case, I wouldn't have, I uh, wouldn't have never told him that the 11th Thursday. would have mm. been or Thursday. Because there's the approval. But they need to question the children, and Rietta is forced to give way. We must change our programs and our things to suit him, and that's not the way you know we're supposed to operate. But if he's not going to turn up on Thursday, I'm not. I'm really going to show him that I'm very disappointed and upset. How are you going to show him that? No, I'm going to tell him. I'm really. I'm going to either going to phone him or I will get into the car and drive to Orlando Power Station and really not giving him a piece of my mind. But um, he can't 
you know, tell the police how to do their work, how to do it, when to do it. Martin and his children do come in on Thursday. Escorted by his lawyer, the children are adamant that they can shed no new light on the murder. In Scottborough, where Antoinette is still being held by police, she claims she's seeing ghosts and demons in her cell. She's been sent for a medical and psychiatric checkup. Now she's out of hospital, Cuervas and Rieta are having her brought to Pretoria to take part in a formal identity parade. I'm on my way to the Littleton police station in and today we had love will be present and I want to interview her regarding the fact that she claimed that she saw demons and spirits while she was in the police cells in Scottsboro. It's just a further confirmation that she's really um, mixing and messing around with the occult. The postmistress has travelled up from Michalisburg to see whether she can identify Antoinette face to face. Martin also agrees to bring his daughter. She's going to take part in the identity parade to rule out any possibility of her being the sender of the notes. The postmistress picks out Antoinette from the lineup. While they've been busy on the Radloff case, a teenage girl involved with Satanists has gone missing. Quirbus and Rieta had been giving her counselling, and now they're concerned for her safety. Alicia Baker, she's 16 years old, and she just disappeared about three weeks ago. She was involved with Satanism, and of course all the family are very worried about her. I don't know whether she's been abducted by Satanists or whether she's been killed or murdered by Satanists, we don't know. Because she's a child, whether she's a Satanist or involved in occultic stuff or, or anything, um, you know, she's a child. And as a mother, you know, um, I am concerned about her being missing because we, on a daily basis, we deal with, with, with missing, missing children. I've got a daughter. She's turning 15 during September. And for me, it's like a mission in life. Like, all these children belong to me, and I have to take care of them. Before she went missing, Alicia told them she was friendly with a woman called Madeleine, whom they suspect is part of a satanic coven. They also want to question Madeleine about the grave robbery in the Pretoria Cemetery. There's strong suspicion that she's involved with this desecration of this grave, where this uh, woman's head has been removed. She was found there that same evening, just shortly after this crime was committed, where she had chicken legs hanging around the neck. She was always dressed in black, they say, with a black cloak. So it's very suspicious. They've tracked down an address for Madeleine, though they're not sure if it's right. Here's number 28. I think you just better go in quickly and just see whether you can find Madeleine inside or not. Well, yes, hear from the people whether they know or not. Okay, so that will be good. Then I must call you. Yes, you call me if you, okay. if you find her inside. Yes, sorry,